everybody, it's Frankie Lou, and I'm out here at the end of my driveway at the Grow Together Homestead. And what I'm doing is I am picking some rose hips. See these lovely things here. Now, um, some of you have watched my previous video on growing um, teas in the garden, and and I do a lot of that obviously but one of my favorite things for tea are these delicious rose hips um, they really are quite amazing they are extremely tasty they have a really nice sort of tart but sweet flavor and they really add a nice nice flavor to teas and on top of that they're really very good for you okay they've done lots of studies and they've shown that when they're fresh these three of these rose hips here have the same amount of vitamin C as a full orange. Okay, when you dry them and process them, they don't have that much vitamin C, but they still do contain a good deal. And then on top of that, they've shown that they have quite a bit of anti-inflammatory properties. So why not, eh? They, I'm, I'm, um, picking some here from some wild roses where I know there is no pesticide that's been sprayed because it seems that the wild roses, particularly those that are here in Alberta, have a much more flavorful rose hip than the ones that you're going to get from your domesticated roses if they produce hips at all. And uh, yeah, there's lots of wild roses around my place here. There's a reason it's the provincial flower here in Alberta and you might say well Frankie Lou why the heck are you out doing that in the snow well rose hips are tasty anytime but if you really want them to be super sweet you want to pick them after the first true full frost that's been around for a couple of days it allows the sugar to develop and it also softens the berry of it up which makes them a little bit easier to process as well because it's not just a matter of picking I'm going to show you a couple more steps because while rose hips are delicious there are some problems that can happen with irritation in the stomach because of the seeds have these tiny little hairs in them that can cause some really serious um, intestinal discomfort so we want to pick them when it's right which is after first frost as you can see <laughs> we've definitely had our first frost here and um, this snow has now stuck around for several days and They'll stick around now for about six months. So um, I'm going to do some more processing here and picking and come back later and show you the next step in making my beautiful dried rose hip tea to add to my other wonderful teas. Okay, so I'm in out of the cold and now it's time to start processing all these lovely rose hips that I picked. I got them right in the nick of time because they're just starting to tiny bit wrinkle up um, they've had that first frost which will do that they're a lovely color they're fully ripe if I left them probably even another week they would start to develop mold spots so um, they get little black spots and stuff on them so it was a good idea that I went out there today to do this so the first thing I want to do is I want to remove obviously any stem bits but also the the uh, end of the flower bit you can cut it off, but I've always found it's easier to pull it off. And um, I'll work away at that and pull all these off. So that's the first step that you need to do is get all of those so you just really have a nice little round ball. Now I'm gonna work away at these, but in the meantime, I'll show you the next couple of steps. So then you need to cut this little seed in half. Uh, like I, I would like to say, I'm not gonna lie, this is a tedious job, but I find it's worth it because I really do love the flavor that the rose hips adds to my teas and also the nutrition. So the inside of your rose hip is gonna look like that, okay? For such a small thing, it's really packed full of seeds and you wanna scrape all those seeds out. You're gonna lose at least half of your mass to seeds. So you might think you have a whole lot of rose hips it's gonna come, especially once it dries, it's gonna go down to quite a little bit, but you really only need a couple teaspoons in a 
in a nice mix to make a, a really flavorful yummy tea. So um, find your tool of choice. I really like the end of this spoon. Um, I used to use knives, but I found that it sort of um, wrecked my my uh, rose hip too much, and I pull those seeds off. This is tedious, um, but it's also absolutely essential if you do want to use your rose hips um, and you're not going to be using something to strain them later because the hairs on those seeds are really terribly bad for your tummy. So you want to be left with, like, the, I'm left with this, okay? I'm going to pop that in a bowl. I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to be doing this for a couple of hours. I'm going to put on a old Will Smith movie or some old <laughs> something to keep me plugging away while I do this tedious little job. Once I have this all done, I'm going to get a nice parchment paper lined cookie sheet. I'm going to pop all my little rose hip hacks on there. And I'm going to put it in my favorite place to sort of dry things. I don't want to use the oven because I, I don't want to use too much heat on the vitamin C to, to wreck down all the nutrition in here. I want it to dry naturally. They're small enough that it will work. Like you don't have to pop it in your oven. And I'm going to pop it up here on top of my fridge. Um, I find it's a great place for stuff to dry because none of my critters can get at it. And it's got a little bit of heat and there's still enough airflow that this will dry off in a couple of days. I'm going to pop it in my jars as the rest of my tea collections. I make up little blends for Christmas for my family and friends and for myself as well to have during the winter. So um, I hope that you'll give it a try. Rose hips are really delicious. Uh, if you want, I know a lot of people make jelly and, and jams with it as well. I don't have time to do that right now. This is sort of the extent that I can deal with with the rose hips, but um, it's a great, like I said, source of vitamin C flavor and a nice little anti-inflammatory as well. So I hope you try it. If you have any questions about this or any of the other topics that we have, if you have questions about teas in particular, make sure you check out our video Tasty Garden Teas because a lot of stuff you're growing in your garden you might not be aware of are could be really great for teas. We, that's what we found in our garden anyways. And um, as always, I hope you have a great day and I hope you take this chance to grow together today. Talk to you soon.